Hey guys, welcome to the channel. We're back working on this pocket door. The kit was pretty good, but there's a couple things I don't like that we're gonna fix, and then we're gonna case this thing out with some regular MDF Colonial Crown. Now, it's pretty straightforward. It's like any other door, except in this case, I'm gonna make it so the top is removable. That way, if I ever need to get in here to adjust the door, if it falls off the track or something, I can get in there. You can't always do this if it's in a, a main area in your house, but since this is a laundry room, it's not that big of a deal. So basically, I'm going to leave the jam and these miters open if possible. This door sticks out a little bit too much, about a quarter inch. I thought maybe the door was a little bit too big, but if I cut the door down, you're going to see in here. I can maybe cut it down, but that's not going to fix my problem. So what I'm going to do is put some quarter inch strips in behind here and build this out and get this nice and flush before I start working on the casing. So why don't we get started with that. strips on that should that should be good enough we'll see okay so I got my jams back in they're sitting pretty they're sitting better they're not perfect but this door needs a little bit of work too so maybe I'll take it off when I'm ready to paint and uh, it'll be good so I'll pin this up and move on <laughs> The next part is cutting the casing. So everything's ready to go for the casing. So in order to cut trim fast, if your saw is set up outside, you don't want me running up and down the stairs cutting one at a time or bring up a piece and mark it out. So you got to get good at measuring stuff out. So what I do with these doors is I'll start, I'll cut all four of the outside casing. And the reveal that I'd like to use is eighth of an inch. The whole house is eighth inch reveal at the jam. So all you need to do is take and draw out a couple doors. And label one so you know which it is. Draw out a couple doors and then go around and measure the jam and add on an eighth of an inch. So this guy here is 80 and 5 eighths, so I'll cut it at 80 and 3 quarter. Uh, if you're not good at the math for some reason, fractions or your metric, whatever, if you don't like doing it that way, then you can just put a little bit of a, a little mark on there at an eighth of an inch. You can set your combination square and mark everything out, but you, you don't really need to do that. The whole point of the eighth is so you have a little bit of play, and then the other problem is if you pre-painted a bunch of this stuff, then you got pencil marks to worry about. So I just try and do the math, but sometimes you screw it up. Anyways, so that's what I'll do is I'll mark all this stuff out. I'll measure it and go down to this saw, cut it, come up and put it in. So here's all my pieces cut. Usually I mark on the back side which is which. I forgot to do that, so I'm just gonna double check. That one looks a little short over here. Yeah, so that one goes up there. Yeah. 
for a pocket door, like I said, I like to leave one side open if I can. If it's in a main area and you can't do that, well, it sucks because if the door comes off the track or needs some adjustment, you need to be able to get in there with your little wrench and adjust things, take this jam off. So what I like to do is put this on like normal, not glue this and only pin along this jam and put the screws in so I can take it out. You can put a little, some little white screw caps on there and then you always are able to pull this off and it works great in a place like a laundry room. Uh, bathrooms, if you're going to do it in a bathroom you might want to seal the inside of this so the moisture doesn't get in there. I don't like pocket doors in bathrooms anyways but if you have to do it that's fine. Otherwise you have to take this thing all apart, adjust the door, try and get it all back together and it can be a pain in the butt. So, let's get started. So when I do this casing, I put my two outside pieces on and I nail up to about 18 inches from the top. That way I have a little bit of wiggle room when I'm trying to fit my miter. And the reason I leave the top off is because when you're trying to cut on your saw inside miter and inside miter with that measurement, it's hard to get your tape measure on that. You know, you can't clip anything on. So this way you get your two pieces on, you can measure the whole thing out, and it's easy peasy. And that way what we do, if we're doing a whole bunch of doors, we'll cut all the side pieces, get them all installed, and then go back through and install all the top pieces. It works pretty good. First thing you want to do is get it an eighth of an inch. Now, I can eyeball it, but if you're not good at eyeballing an eighth of an inch, again, take a combination square and set it to an eighth of an inch and make a mark all the way around and then you're good to go. Set it on the floor. Now I'm using inch and a half nails. If that's a little long for these you might want to go down to an inch. If you don't like filling nail holes you can put a few dabs of glue in behind like no more nails or something. Nail all the way down. I'm going to do this side here. Damn, it's a little out at the bottom. Drywall's not quite smooth here. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Come down about 18 inches or so. Maybe an eighth inch reveal. Now, add to your list a piece of paper. You can do a top measurement. Now, this works great because you just measure the outside. There we go. 37 and a quarter. We'll do 5 sixteenths. 37 and 5 sixteenths on the hall side. And then I'll measure on this side. Should be close. 37 and 5 sixteenths. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to run back down to the saw. If you like this video and you want to see more, well make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you got any questions, just leave it in the comments below. So the reason I do 
the top part last so I have a good spot to clip my tape measure on. Just like that. Now I can measure out 37 and 5 sixteenths. My broken pencil. Because if I try to do it on the inside, it wants to, there's nothing to hook on to. If I have to do that, I'll take a little clamp. I'll put this on the one and put a clamp on there and then add one inch or try to hook it or whatever. But I try to avoid that. So, now that I have this ready, cut it. Give it a double check. 37 and 5 16th. The other one. Okay, we're going to see how this fits. So that side's pretty close. That side's not great. So, I'm going to go to my saw. And this one, just take a little bit off the top down to nothing and this guy here it's open at the top but I can stick a shim in there and that'll pull it tight so this side's okay so that looks pretty good this guy this jam here since I took it apart, there's nothing really holding it together, so I'm actually going to pin the top of this so I can suck that in. And everything should work out nice with this guy. See, it's loose in there. And it just wants to pop back. So I'm going to pin that to hold it in place. Hold it in place on the jam, but not into the wall yet. And hopefully. Hopefully I can make this work. One of the problems with these guys, I find I'm getting a lot more heads not driven in. Can you use a nail punch or you can borrow somebody's screwdriver? Don't use your own because it'll dull it up. You just tap the head in. So, anyways, the idea is now I can just unscrew this. A little too high with my nails, but it'll work. I'm gonna put a little bit smaller nails in. That's likely to blow out. There. Is 
Now you can take it off. Now you can get your wrench and stuff in there, or unclip it, take the door right out. And that's what I'm going to do because I'm going to shave this edge off. I still have the angle on here because I've reused the door and these doors are, have a bit of an angle on them. So, and then it's kind of split. So I just got to clean it up. So that way I'll be able to unhook it. Anyways, something's rubbing. I can fix that. So I'll put this back in and we'll show you the other side. Now for the outside, let's see how it fits. A little open there, I'm gonna have to stick a shim in there. This one, a little tight at the top. I should be able to get it. Once you got it all fitted, I like to glue both sides. Make sure that's out there. Really get the glue in there. You'll see a lot of guys use CP glue or the super glue or whatever. I'll show you why. I like regular glue. So I'll get this one lined up. Just take a damp rag and wipe off the excess. Okay, ready for some filler, some caulking, some paint. It's all done. <laughs> 